Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to create basic glossy shader. It's gonna be a basic shader, the one you can use on day-to-day -day basis in your projects and it's not that fancy as some of the shaders, but it's also easy to set up and I really hope you're gonna find it useful. This video is a short series of video tutorials dedicated to materials only, you can find it in the video description. And now let's just jump into it. I'm gonna start with a very basic scene setup as you can see here. By the way, the scene and the material can be downloaded from the link in the video description. Now I'm gonna press Z key and go to the rendered view. So let me now expand this panel slightly and let's choose the shader editor here. I'm gonna press N here to disable the tab and with my material preview element here selected. Let's press the new and let's also add the same material to the plane. So the very, very basic glossy shader is actually pretty simple to set up. If you change the base color, you can see how it affects the shader itself. Let's maybe disable the overlays. And the main sliders you should focus on is the roughness and specular. The specular in general is responsible for the amount of reflections the material has. So you can see if I go with it to the value of one, the ball and the plane become much more reflective and the lights around the scene are much more visible. If we go down with it, you can see the reflections are disappearing and we are only having the shadows and slight light uh, fields here. Um, let's go back to the default value of 0.5. And now if I reduce the roughness setting, you can see this makes the reflection type uh, different. So if we go down to zero, we are getting the mirrored reflections without any blur in them. And if we go fully to the value of one, we are getting, you might think this material has no reflections as we, when we remove the specular, but that's not the case. You can see if we play around with the specular slider, uh, the look of the shader still changes. I would suggest keeping the specular as 0.5 as default. And if you want to create completely matte material, then just use roughness of one. So most of the materials like rubber, general plastic and glossy surfaces will be created using just these two sliders, basically using the roughness slider most of the time. As you can see when I'm going down with it, we are getting something like a highly reflective plastic. Um, one tip, if you want to create a dark material, so let's say a dark plastic, you will have to reduce the color to let's say 0.1. Let's say you want to create a rubber cable. So naturally you would increase the roughness to let's say 0.75. So now we are getting this nice looking matte black material. But for the dark surfaces, I suggest decreasing the specular slightly to let's say 0.25 because usually the dark materials reflect the environment a little bit less than the bright materials. So yeah, if you're using bright colors here, you might consider increasing the specular to let's say 0.75. And if you're using dark materials, then I suggest going down with specular. There is one more interesting setting around the basic glossy material. Let's set up a color, um, let's say this one. Let's increase the roughness, making material a little bit more matte, maybe point of, 0.75 here, 0.5 here as default. And we have the clear coat and clear coat roughness settings here. So what these do is basically as when you're doing plastic models or car uh, paint, for example, you're having the base color covered with the glossy uh, paint, which is colorless, but gives this cool reflection to your model to the car to the surface. So you can see by playing with the roughness, we can make it a little bit more visible. Let's increase the clear coat to 0.75, the roughness to 0.2. And now if I reduce this roughness here, you can see we're getting this sort of double reflection, double specular effect within our material. I think it's a pretty cool 
look. And this can be also used for creating all sorts of plastics, all sorts of glossy surfaces, making them much more interesting. So yeah, I hope that's a useful trick. But what if you would like to add a texture to your glossy material? Well, I'm gonna show you now how to create those cool looking smudges and a little bit of dirt on your surface. All you need is a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be black as in my case, you can use a white paper and ink, but then it's a bit harder to wash it off. I'm using a liquid uh, metal marker, so it's also hard to wash it off, but I would suggest chalk and uh, black paper. Anyways, as you can see, I'm just making the paper a little bit dirty, adding more and more of the color to it. Once I'm ready, um, I'm just making a picture. Just make sure you have your hands clean before touching the camera. Let's now bring the texture to Photoshop or any other editing software that you're using. I'm gonna crop it first. So I'm choosing the square aspect ratio and trying to select the part of my paper that I like. Now I'm gonna press Ctrl J to duplicate the layer, go to Filter, Other and Offset. So I'm trying to make this texture seamless, that's why I'm offsetting it by 2000 with the res resolution of 4000, yes exactly. I'm gonna press the S key to select this stamp tool and now I'm just gonna stamp those parts of the texture very roughly ar around the center so we are getting rid of those uh, straight lines like here. It doesn't have to be super precise to be honest uh, in case you're not that uh, skilled at Photoshop. I'm just holding the Alt key to select a source and then left clicking around the texture to paint the selection. Like you can see here we have those lines appearing everywhere, we will have to get rid of them. So just bloop, 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 doing it like this. I guess that's it. Okay, let's press Ctrl J once again to duplicate the layer and let's use the same filter once more just to see the result. So you can see we can fix the texture in this area as well. We could also paint a little bit here. And that's basically how you do very, very, very rough um, seamless texture. Let's do the offset by 1000 right now so we can see if it looks good. I guess, yeah, should do the trick. Let's now try importing it to Blender. And by the way, I forgot about the color processing. How about that? So I'm gonna press Ctrl U to open the hue saturation box, gonna go down with the saturation, hit OK, and now Ctrl M to open the curves. Let's just increase the contrast within our texture a little bit like that. And that's basically it, that's the color correction. Let's now import the texture to Blender. And back to Blender again, let's just drag and drop our texture to the node editor here and we want to plug it into the roughness input here. So you can see once we do that, this is the result. Material starts looking much more interesting, I think, but it's a little bit too wet. So let's press Shift A, choose the converter and color ramp node. If we plug it in, nothing really changes, but what, once you start playing around with the handles, the look of your shader starts to change. We can also change the look of the graph itself. I usually use B-spline because it gives me more soft uh, results. So if I move the black slider to the right, it makes the reflections uh, sharper, but we can also change the color from black to something more grayish, like here. And that alone reduces the wetness of the look. So you can see actually my fingerprints here. Um, this is the very, very quick and dirty way, I would say, to create the glossy materials, the basic glossy materials, adding some details to them, like the ones you can see here. Um, we can also use this texture as an input to the bump. So let's do it very, very quickly. I'm gonna press Shift A, choose the vector and bump node. 
I'm gonna plug it, uh, connect the normals here. And I'm gonna use the same input as a height here. So the setting you wanna change, you can see, well, this looks very, very, very muddy. Um, the setting you wanna change is the distance. So we want to make the bump uh, not that, uh, that strong. Let's first change the distance. We can also invert uh, the look of the bump because right now you can see it goes uh, outwards. So let's put it inside the plane, inside the surface like that. And now we can also fine tune it with the strength settings here. So you can see it looks pretty interesting. Um, again, we can play around with this handle here. We can also create uh, RGB curves node and plug it in here. So let's say if you want to make the reflections more glossy or less glossy, but you don't want to change what you have set up here, we can use the RGB curves and just one handle. By moving it up and down, we can very quickly change the general look of the shader, make it more smooth like here, or much more wet and sharp like here. So I hope this was informative. Remember, you can download this little scene plus the shader from the Chocoforce store. Link is in the video description. And that's about it as for the glossy shader. Thanks everyone for watching and see you in another Chocofor video. Bye bye.